hoping to avoid attention. This cannon shop in Beijing also added a Chinese flag to defuse any protesters' anger. Anti-Japanese sentiment has risen across China in the last week after Japan announced it was buying disputed islands in the East China Sea. Some of the demonstrations turned violent, with protesters attacking any establishment associated with Japan. Scenes like these have led some Japanese companies like Canon and Panasonic to suspend their operations in a number of locations in China until further notice. China has become a global manufacturing hub and its government prides itself on keeping costs low to continue to attract foreign investors. This year, Japanese investment has increased 16 percent over last year. Shutting down the factory is a bad decision. Canon has such a big market in China. Now people will stop using the brand. It's harmful for both Chinese and Japanese. Like the Chinese protesters who smash up cars and shops, Canon shutting the factory is just instigating more extreme actions. It's not helping. Despite a long troubled history between them, China and Japan have developed a mutually beneficial trade relationship. The two are now the largest economies in the region, and the last thing either of them want is a rupture between them that could potentially do damage at home. Against Japan at the moment, I think it's just a heightened issue, um, but it will probably will be curtailed. Uh, and the, you know, at the end of the day, if they want to, they can clamp down very, very quickly and very, very hard. So, and they will when it's in their economic interest. The U.S. Secretary of Defense is in the region to meet officials in both countries, including China's leader in waiting, Xi Jinping. China has now assured Japan it will protect its business interests. But anti-Japan demonstrators are still protesting in China. And as long as that goes on, there's only so much that China's government can do when geopolitics become clouded by passion. Margot Tigas, Al Jazeera, Hong Kong.